Hey everybody, it's Patrick at the Pitch Tech. Welcome to round three. This is going to be an OG Dash matchup for the 10K. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey everybody, so for this round, we're going to just act like we're going against Boost Dash, like round one. Um, Resurgence of Tree Frog is very interesting, to say the least. I'm not exactly sure since I haven't played Dash in such a long time. But I guess it has merit since Matt W took the Tree Frog Dash version, uh, his version, the uh, top eight in Worlds. I guess it has like some matchups that are probably better than maybe the Boost Dash has. So for us, this is the best version of Dash to go against, so we can just stack basically, um, like we did in the first one. So there's no real hidden changes here. We're gonna try to find our combo pieces pretty quick and um, go from there. But since we see another induction chamber and another in base arms we're going to have a sense that this is going to be the same thing we need to start with our count go ahead and make sure that our stack is going to be pretty juicy towards the beginning and this is actually not a bad start right like these three combo pieces because it could be sonic boom at the very beginning can lead into the home if we really wanted it to so this is actually not too bad it can still be used as resources. He's going to get a Spark of Genius out, out the gate, which is pretty good for turn zero. Because right now you want to try to get Exodia as fast as possible. And there's some secret tech later on that comes through. So he just gets another induction chamber. Out of the gate, he's got more pressure than the last dash because he couldn't find another item. For our game in round one so this is going to be definitely more damage compounding later on throughout the match for like dash and icelander that was one of those things that we had to stack against them too and like go with a cross text plan i think we see a red one a red flare here but they don't want to take unnecessary damage anyway so i think we can get this arsenal card out of here which is the last card in hand we can just kind of strip it even though it does pump um anything by one um we can probably find a zero cost and hope for the best just what we do and we just shoot it for four three no it was three because we only we can pump so has to be to the point where hopefully we can just strip it and at least get one damage because then this gives us a free op. Oh, yep, we get the damage to go through. We can get a free opt off this. Thirty-seven off on trigger. It's one of those cards that we can't even put into our stack as well because that back just sucks. It, it, we can't further it fast enough. So we keep it to be uh, Wildfire, Boom, Tone, Blue. Kinda okay to get it that way, I think. But with that, we draw up to a pretty nice hand. It's I plus some really good shenanigans, but it allows us to strip some cards from his hand, which is nice. Um, we can go with Chain Lightning plus Snapback, and then if he takes it all, which more likely he doesn't, because you got to survive in any iteration for Free Frog Dash against anybody. We're just going to go with uh, Chain Lightning here as our action point. And then we're going to have I here. So we are going to take a look at the top. I can't remember. But, uh, is that a red one? Is that two blues? That might be a red. And the reason why I'm not bottoming this blue, I think, is because we need to have a buffer where it's... This eye can help buffer whatever's underneath. The stack can be kind of done by now, but I'll, there's potential to, like... Have something underneath this eye with... As it's being the blue there, and I'm just going to dump my entire hand... So just keep those two cards on top again. I'm not furthering my stack, which kind of sucks. We're getting there kind of slow. So here is when we get a judge call. Because he doesn't understand the, the combination that I'm doing here. So I'll just let the audio play. 
right? Yeah, that's my action point. So it sees this as a card that's been played, so I can play this. But if it hasn't resolved yet... So this is just, I can only play it. It doesn't have to be resolved. It just says, I play it, and then snapback comes bin, and I can play as an instant. Now this, then this will resolve, and then it'll come back to this. But like, doesn't this one need to resolve to allow you to play no. the next one's an instant? You can ask the judge, but it's not. Uh, I'll quickly ask for a judge. Just uh, yeah, if you want. Judge. This one resolves. That's still pending. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I just talked to the other judge, and it sounds like I misunderstood the yes. question like, that I, was I being feel like asked. I also okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so chain light. In order for chain lightning's effect to apply, yes. chain lightning yes. would have to have resolved. Yeah. Yeah. However, in this case, what I'm understanding is is snapback was already resolved, and uh, so we're talking about the effect on snapback. Yeah, so like the snapback is resolved, it allows me to play it as an instant because I played over chain lightning. Yeah, right, and the chain lightning he has played, yes. even though it's it on has the not stack. resolved. Yeah. yeah, this part, I, I wasn't even looking at this part. I was yeah, just, that's like, fine. This is what I was raising, okay. yeah. not realizing this gotcha. could be played okay, as an instant. Okay, so we, we, we understand now everything is yeah. happening. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, Y'all have uh, five minutes. Okay. okay, thank you. Sounds good. Okay, so that's coming in for four. And then the bottom part of this... It'll be just because I played this, it has three damage now. Without this being resolved, it would have no damage. So oh, okay. because I played this, it's going to be coming back to be a three damage as well. Okay. So as we get that sorted out, it's one of those confusing cards that uh, we really don't... You don't really see that often in terms of uh, the chain lightning snapback combo. It would have been potentially extremely dangerous if he had let this damage go through, which is... Hard to just go ahead and AB everything. Um, and I really can't do anything with the Blazing. I don't want to lock my arsenal. It's basically damaged still. It's my first iteration of Blazing, so it's kind of a little rough that uh, we have Blazing within that area. So I still think it's a safe play to play it this way. Let's so go ahead and get one damage in and not lock my arsenal. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to play it next time. I don't know how I'm supposed to use it anyways in terms of just getting into my pitch because of the fact that I already used everything. So we go ahead with more blocking and trying to get our stack furthered as much as we can. So hopefully we can find a combo piece that's pretty useful. We do have one wildfire in stack. I'm gonna shoot this for five, which is hopefully helping us out. Endo always accelerates it, but it just depends on how much they bring and generally it is AB3, but I'm so glad that the tree frog dashes are on AB3 instead of AB4. So it's nice to see the second blazing that we've seen this game this early so that way we can get it right underneath. Because we do happen to have uh, a blue that's going to be behind it so that way we can see the blue later on and like, maybe bottom it. Maybe I think that I forgot about the I being a thing because now it's blue eye blue blazing I'm not exactly sure why I did it like that it's very interesting yeah I can't remember my thought process behind that was it's an extra blue out of the way I yeah because the opt can just help me out but so we're trying to further our stack a little bit better without trying to die here did you see another tone but it's you can I'll just use it to accelerate our game plan of trying to get there fast enough. So now these are just only coming in for two. Um, currently, he doesn't have pumps just yet on the gun. Which and then that will start to get pretty dangerous at that point.
And speaking of, we get our first purifier, so that's now going to start getting pretty spicy. We can still block without taking damage, um, but when that that second purifier comes down, it's going to start taking down for each. So it's going to be pretty rough. Uh, we're going to use this to further stack, like I mentioned. So accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. Um, thinking on maybe the damage here, but then he'll just prevent it all. I think think it's not worth shooting so I think I go with the Kano again that's our only Tome of Fire Doe in the deck since we're not stacking so an aggro matchups only have one one right now we might as well use it again to further more we can go with some more damage if we want to at least try to now that we have the option with two floating we could probably get some cards out of them He did load up a little bit before, but this might make him scared slightly more because I've already used my action points, so he doesn't want me to further my chain of wizard cards, which is a new iteration that I put in between this and the battle hardened. Going up more blues, I would like I, I put that in there more than the others. Like Scalding Rain, it's a slightly better card, I think. So we just let it go with Flare in our arsenal. Which gives him a bit of a spook, maybe. Maybe we can get him to not go too far, extend too far. We did strip a card from hand. He needs to load up and shoot some, at least two shots, maybe, and then hold up some cards. They can't overextend too far. Oh. So... So now he's going to start shooting for three. Getting pretty juicy here. We're going to take no damage from these, though, as much as we can. Oh, he gives it go again. So he's playing a second purifier. Take note that he has no counters on anything. It is a bit spooky to start seeing this now. He's got a lot of damage potential on the board. So we've got a choice here, and I think I made the right choice. And it took me a second to realize it. And I think that's why I was like, okay, so he doesn't have any counters on anything. Let's try to strip at least one card from him. I can just pocket this potion. So let me just toss this flare for max damage without even revealing anything. So maybe he can get spooked just enough. And maybe his hand isn't going to line up with all blues. Which if I prevent, if I prevent at least a blue from his hand going away and he prevents three, I can probably prevent maybe that's two shots with pistol, pure fire. The pure fires would be loaded up, of course, but then you'd have the induction chamber, pistol, induction, pistol. So I'm saving life as I'm doing damage and it's getting prevented at the same time. And I can always just block out and then play this as my action point. But now we see that we got another key piece, which is another potion. Energy potion, we valued those slightly over the depot, but we only have one depot, so I guess we can value that a lot a little bit more later on down the road. We have three epots, we have a tome in our stack, we can pretty much have enough resources. But we want to get all three to four pots out if we can. Um we can just leave that depot in Arsenal. We haven't seen a CNC just yet. Not to say that that isn't in there, but 
you can bet pretty heavily that the tree frog dashes are bringing CNC. So he loads up everything here. And then we see a blue and a red. So that was good just to take one red out. And then he does a core, which again, this is like a setup turn. Kind of rough. We can't just do anything here. For blocking, we. I think uh, we can just toss everything towards pitch and then just toss out the e pot for our action point. So it doesn't do anything good for us to strip cards because he's already loaded up and he's going to have core on his turn. So the most we're going to be getting is 12. And if he has enough resources, then he can probably go in for a bigger attack afterwards. We let it go. We keep making sure to take note of Arsenal the entire time. I do remember that being a thing. We're going to go ahead, try to shoot this here. These, uh, I think that should have been slightly done better. Like I'm pitching this red flare and then I'm pitching the yellow which I think the yellow should have just been used. However, I get that I don't want to IP myself if there's nothing going on. So it, what if he just takes it? You know, what if he takes the chance of, okay, there's two threats in his pitch. What if I just take the two and then run the chances of him not doing anything with the banish? And then now he has a full grip. So... I'm extremely hoping that I get one card out of him and I can just place this pot for turn. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. Um, I'm not sure how I could have done it better. Because I do want to put one of the potions in. So he used his tunic. And then a red. Which is smart, smart. Um, the tunic can just come back. Not threaten combo just yet, so he can save it for Oasis whenever he wants. We get one card at least. And it was like one of those weird Evo ones. They're just basically damage based on Evos or whatever. I can't remember what it was called. So that at least gives us something to do. Or at least gives us something to prevent. So we're coming in for four now, which is a little rough. We have an E pot. We want to play the E pot. We can just. Play the E-Pod, take a little damage here and there. Again, like I said, three shots, so that's 12. So we're going to take three damage for this E-Pod. If we S all he does this turn. And it depends on how his hand lines up with his resources. He may take it to off turn for um, the resources that come through. But we're not going to be pre presenting damage. So it doesn't help us like it did before with the flare. And he's got a core. So it depends on how his hand is, so he's going to load up everything. And he, have, he may have spare resources just to be able to load up everything and then shoot. But no, he actually sets up again, so he sets up with the Warhorn. That's the secret tech I was talking about. Kind of old tech versus um, Icelander, so I'm kind of curious why he would... Maybe it's other mirror matches? If he goes up against other dashes, he can probably destroy other dash items like the Induction Chamber. If it's tree fog versus tree fog, I guess that's a induction. And it also hits allies as well, if I'm not mistaken. So he can probably shoot, shoot, shoot on the dragons. And then go from there to deciding on which dragon he wants to whittle down and then let it destroy at the end. As if it's a beefy attack, or not beefy attack, a beefy dragon. Um, like Necria, that might be a way to destroy it without destroying it. Easier way. So here we're using the D-Pot, which is interesting, I think. Maybe I should have just prioritized the ocean slightly more. But I think, I guess that's actually kind of a mind game. Um, rather than just playing out the one that's in my hand, he could think that's just red that I'm arsling now. I guess that's okay. There's no min-maxing for that decision, I think. Uh, we'll go plus two. Four. 
So coming in for four again. Are going to start taking damage. We really don't have our Toma Find Owls to help us with the life buffer, like I mentioned, or uh, Oasis. We took him out of the deck. But again, if I knew it was Tree Fog, I think it might have been slightly different. So I want to say this is our second wildfire that we've seen. I think. Pretty sure that's a wildfire. Yep, so that's a wildfire. I think that's our second one. Because we had one at the beginning, so that's our second one. that he has the resources on there and then he could play his warhorn if he wanted to or at least activate the warhorn and then destroy i would have to destroy one of my potions so he just does find dolls for seven so yeah this is our second one because we do have one in stack we would have to wait for the second one or the third one to come back around and we can block six here and place out a potion and i'm curious on how much damage i want to take comparatively to all the other damage that i could take later on down the game because now it's master exodia damage coming through right now which is this is still smart from him like to be able to load up everything if I were to take any damage and send some damage back he can still fight with what he's already loaded back and it's instead of like three there's only three two shots and then instead of three it would have been just an additional damage coming through so we're gonna say our second one can go bye bye for now and try to pocket the um third one that we come through the third wildfire so we play our pot for turn Again, yeah, Warhorn's in there. We get ya. It sucks. Um, we come in for four now, like normal. We want to block with every three block we can and just use the tome to further our stack, like mentioned before. Our stack is good, like it's the middle spell that helps out with Sonic Boom in this iteration, it's one of those ones that might, it's nice enough to do it. We can't do Blazing as our fourth because we can't do Wildfire, Wildfire, Blazing. It depends on how much his life is and stuff like that. It can kill, but it typically doesn't. We're not tossing a lot and he prevents a lot. So it has to be a fourth spell. So we're going to just have to count on that Boom to be our fourth spell because we didn't see our second Blazing within our stack close enough. We're going to have to count as lethal being the blazing. There is potential to do a five spell as well for the act that we currently have. Just got to count on our wildfire being an arsenal. Now he wants to destroy the warhorn to destroy one of our stuff. I think about this for a second. I think, I think the I made the right choice by destroying an epod because we do have a tome. So if I go past it, which I think in my mind I have already forgotten the stack because of the judge call kind of threw me off a slightly, and then I'm forgetting it a little bit, and I run into something later on, so I'm gonna cover that in a little bit. So I destroy the epod. And we have another epod coming around, so he just remembers everything back remembers two cards instead of three so it's up to three so he just gains those two back now he sigils here able to shoot two shots blow up a potion and gain some life back pretty okay turn now we go ahead and put two there we get blazing, so uh, that's a nice little pocket. That's, I think that's our second. No, that's our third because we blocked with another one, I think, before. 
Oh, maybe going crazy here. Oh, yeah, we used one. So, yeah, so that is our third. We used it with the uh, chain lightning. And we opted one down below. Now we're sending this in the red one. Yeah, that's the red one. I have one card in hand. I've already used my action point. We get lucky that we were able to get the resources to shoot one. Shoot one. And then now we can just pocket this blazing in our arsenal. I would have liked Bodfire to be better, so comes back around. I'll, I'll show you guys the combo turn because our battery died. And we further it stacked a little bit more. See our last potion, so we want to probably keep that. We bought him one, and we keep the potion on top, so it's nice because we can just block, 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 and then put the potion in. Is our action point? One to the top, one to the bottom. We pass from there. So here it gets confusing. Um, we see our third wildfire, but it's lined up exactly with the sonic boom, like how I pitched it. So I was now I'm starting to get confused and starting to guess myself. So I guess myself. <laughs> That's why I checked my graveyard. I'm like, wait a minute, did I put 59 cards in? Because again, remember I I forgot my my count. Um, sometimes it happens and I'm thinking to myself, how the fuck did I forget my count? How, is this my second or is this my third or is this the, the very beginning one that I did? Cause I know I've got one in graveyard. I know I'll put one in stack. Is this the one that I had in stack? This, this is my third epot, but maybe this is the last epot here. Oh, so I'm considering on my options. Cause then right now I have a tall blue blue. If this is my, my stack wildfire, which is, it's not. And now my wildfire in my hand should go in my arsenal if it's not. So now I'm considering blocks. I think that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm needing to do that. So we take four. Just to make sure that if I am wrong, that I can maybe send damage. But I'm going to show you guys the combo turn because my battery dies here, I think, after this one. I'm going to have to show you guys what, how it went down. Uh, I think I remember the hands later on. So I think now we're going to just go ahead and assume that I can just block here. Um, we'll just block for one shot at the very, very least. And then go about our day and play this spot. Take one damage. I know we took the first shot. I think now at this point we're just gonna consider that we can just play our turn here. He's now considering that maybe I can combo with three cards, which I don't know what the resources in his hand. I think the confusion of this turn and, and everything, I think it kind of, I could have blocked with uh, the lesson. That might have helped me out a little bit. It does help me gain three life, quote unquote, because I didn't block with it. And now he loads pistol. He's not playing out his arsenal. Now he's playing it out, and he's playing Spark for free, which is Echo, I think. So now it's just probably going to be Teclo Core. He has one card in hand. So it's not stack, but I am considering, like, is I'm psyching myself out. I, I don't know exactly if it's stack or not, but it ended up not being stack. So we can probably move it over towards the combo turn. And there's a turn before the combo turn, and I'll show that one as well. So I'm going to show the combo turn and then the turn itself of the combo. So yeah, he does get core, and then he charges it and then passes. 
this is the only thing that happens this turn, and I think the battery dies. So we're going to ship it over to the TTS on the following turn and the combo turn. Hey, guys. So this is going to be the couple turns before the combo turn, so we're going to lead up to it. So because the battery died, we're going to show um, we blocked with this. The core comes out. We pitch towards Crucible for this because it's kind of awkward, and we IP ourselves only one time this entire game. We set this, and then I still get confused if this is the only... This is the stack uh, wildfire. So when we go through that, we can just basically lead up to Tome Blue Blue, and we'd be safe with the blazing in our tar on um, next afterwards. So then we should be fine. But then we do lead up to the uh, three more cards that are not towards it. So we end up blocking with one, I think. And then we think, okay, so maybe we do have the next wildfire. This kind of helps me understand that this, there's one more wildfire. So from here, we just send damage of blazing. And in response, we send four and four. This is actually one of the best ones to help us out. During this turn, when we send damage on our turn, we send four, which strips three reds from his hand and then takes one here. So that means that he only has one card in his hand. And that should be a pretty good indication that he only has all reds. So we go into our turn after that. And he just passes with one, with one card in hand. I don't, don't think Tunic is up. Tunic is not up. So we see now we have our stack right here. So from here, we know that eyes on top. I think we I think we end up pitching everything, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, actually, I think I am wrong. So we just use this as our uh, Kano's right here. And we have this in our hand because I, I don't I remember popping these later on for certain things. So we get these two as our banish and then we gain these two back. OK, so that is how it is. So this is what we do now. We already use our D-Pot. And then from there, we end up with a Kano. I think we see both of these. And then I think we use our Storm Striders to Ragamuffins this as our Delio here. So that means we get this back on hand. And then this can still be underneath. So we keep that as hidden information. So that is one of the things we do. And we keep two floating here. We have the prog in our hand. So now this banishes. And from that, we have this information here and then the Storm Striders resolves. So now we have this five here and then we do our calculations here. Um, we, can, we know that there's a, probably Oasis because he's been sitting on it for probably a couple turns now and we haven't seen it. So we're just gonna safely assume that this is good. So there is the inclination of setting this for two, right? And so we know that there's the second wildfire into our arsenal. So I think the, the Storm Striders play is here. Now that I remember it, we, we, don't, say, we don't burn our end Striders there. So we send it for two. Um, we, have the, we have the thought process of now this is coming in for four. The combo is coming in for four and he has one card in hand. We're going to wait with the Metacarpus trigger on the stack. With the Metacarpus trigger on the stack, if he has blues that are going to come behind the um, Oasis, like a blue and Oasis, and he has two floating, this can be probably prevented by four. So this currently is going to be um, minus four if he Oasis this. And then have two floating, which probably is going to be AB4, AB2, sorry, on this. And this would go down to two. This would be buffed up to two, so it'd be two and two at that point. So we have two options of letting it go for two, two, and then Sonic Boom. And then we can have the Sonic Boom hit the blazing, or we can use this for the blazing. So my thought process is let's wait and see what he has in hand. So he has the, this is coming in for four right now. This doesn't have anything. So he uses a red and Oasis is the use Oasis Respite on this wildfire. So now we don't even have to pump this. We can just say, I'm going to pop this, send this in for four right here and let this hit for four. And then this covers basically the same thing. And so now it's going to be four for four. The wildfire that comes in, the buff just negates the oasis. So we can pop this here, have this come in for, um, this will be 11 here. So this would be 11. 
And the reason why I didn't, if there was extra resources on this AB on the wildfire, I can pump this via the crucible with the spare blue that I have. So this can go up to six if he had two resources over. So then if he AB twos this, it goes back down to four. The node will still come in. I have one floating for the node after the blue. I can node it. This can come up to five. And then this four can still come up and go up to nine and over count. So this would be it basically I have my options open with that availability. So I before this is sent through, I um I I use the spare blue to hit this blazing off the top as a banish. And then I use the e-pot and I hit this for 11 here. So then I have a five spell and it becomes a dart. And even that is death right there. So that was the combo. I gave myself an option of either pumping this for six and then if he had spare blue, like spare resources afterwards, which still would have been probably even more. And um, we have like the potential of a more value, which I didn't know what this was before. I probably could have had a better value of like a higher costed blue and that would be better. So we, we end up five spelling him this way and we get the win for that. But we were like on 2 HP at that point. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you like the combo. And if there's anything that I'm missing, let me know.